One year ago, our lives were shattered. But we have not forgotten. in the face of the Vandal threat. We have dedicated ourselves to creating the universe we have always wanted. A safe and secure UEE for all. Thanks to your continued support in the sale of war bonds, the UEE is proud to announce the Militia Mobilization Initiative authorizing the sale of certain military-grade ships to ensure that civilian militias are properly equipped to defend the Empire in times of need. We will ensure a brighter future for our children. At the forefront of that effort is RSI's newest ship, the Polaris. Combining devastating firepower and searing speed, the Polaris-class Corvette is effective against a wide variety of aggressors and scenarios. From delivering humanitarian aid to tactical operations, the Polaris' ability will make it an essential part of any fleet for years to come. But the Polaris is only the tip of the spear for this grand initiative. A full line of other ships are now available for a limited time. And to support faster mobilization and operational effectiveness, fleet formations are being offered in discounted pre-designed ship teams. So stand in solidarity with the brave men and women who put their lives on the line and join them in protecting the dream that is the UEE. Answer the call today. All right. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, you, actually, you probably already know because it's been on Reddit. We we sort of pre-released uh, our RSI Polaris Corvette, and uh, I think yesterday was the best day we ever had in Star Citizen. Um, and, and, and 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 I mean, the one thing I do want to say though, because I, I know this sort of sometimes is a bit of debate and controversy. The uh, it is your no one needs to get a big fancy spaceship or anything else if you spend 40 or 45 dollars and do it that's all you need but the way i look at it is it, you know this uh, you know getting a corvette or you know whatever a constellation um, is really just supporting development i mean that's kind of the way it looks like and so for me it should only be if someone's saying you know what i really like what these guys are doing i want to support it i love the process and i'm there and and they're giving me a cool ship in the process. That's, that's the way it should be, nothing more, nothing less, because you will absolutely be able to earn everything in-game playing, right? Um, just saying. Uh, but uh, it is a cool ship, anyway, just let you know. And you, you go. Uh, so we'll get, off, we'll get off that, but you know, thank you for everyone that's uh, bought a Corvette, because it's what makes us go, it's what allows us to build the things that we're doing. And uh, thank you to anyone that supported it, whether you've gotten a tiny little thing or a really big thing. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click. There we go. Oh, look at that. Um, so we're going to give you, I'm going to go through a bit boring uh, update stuff now, and then we're going to show you some cool stuff. Uh, so first, Squadron 42, uh, sort of uh, tell you kind of where we're at on it. Um, Squadron 42, like other things, uh, you know, like we just showed you Spectrum and and by the way, the one thing, just to segue back to where we were on that, that uh, Benoit and John didn't mention is that the goal when we deliver Spectrum for the first time is also delivering the next generation launcher, which has the new patcher, uh, which will not be downloading gigs of data all the time whenever we do a small thing. Uh, <laughs> which which I, I, I think would, would, would help people out. I mean, you know, if you've got fast internet, maybe it's not such a big deal, but with data caps and all the rest of stuff, um, and it's also frustrating even for us when we're patching on the dev side. It's like you change one file and suddenly there's 
at least two gigabytes. So the new system's really uh, it's exponentially better. It will only be bringing down things that change. Um, so we're working hard to deliver uh, the spectrum and the new patcher for you before the end of the year. So I'm not going to give you any specific dates because I get shot when I do that. Uh, but um, I, you know, our platform team is much more reliable than 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 our, me. Uh, so um, as I'm an optimist, you have to be an optimist in this business. Um, so anyway, so speaking of optimistic, uh, Squadron 42, uh, we it's it's significantly grown from when it was first pitched in 2012. Uh, so to sort of get you where we're landing at, because we're content and sort of feature lock now, we have what we call chapters, which is chapters in the story. There's 28 of them uh, in uh, Squadron 42, uh, Episode 1, um, which is equivalent to probably about 60-plus missions. Most of our chapters are multi-part, so if you compare it to a Wing Commander mission, they're usually two to three missions in length, so there's flying around, down on foot, or talking to people, all sorts of stuff. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, obviously it has an A-list a -list cast that you all know about. There's a few people we haven't told you about that will be a surprise that we will unveil later on, because um, we have some other people that are part of it, which is pretty cool. Um, we have 340 speaking roles in it, um, you know, which is insane, because most movies have maybe 30 or 40 speaking roles. Um, and uh, state-of-the-art facial scanning and mocap. We showed a little bit, of, I had a 10 for the chairman, we talked a bit about that, and uh, you know, we're really making uh, great strides on that, and the goal is to be as good or better than anything else you've seen out there. Uh, of over 20 hours of performance capture, which is um, not a small amount, and it gives you an idea of the play amount you're going to get when you've got that much of sort of people talking to you as well as action stuff. Um, you know, Dave and Will, um, who are, I think, here in this... Where are you, Dave and Will? Hands up. Over there. Okay. Incredibly talented, wrote 1,255 pages and have been steadfastly there with uh, me last year and this year shooting. And I have to say, uh, they're absolute rock stars. I mean, you know, we were, con con I think we only just finished writing all the stuff for Squadron 42 earlier this year when we were doing the, the final shoot, which we did earlier this year. Um, uh, but it's, um, I, I think, a really fantastic story, so I can't wait for you guys to actually experience it and play it. Um, we have 40 distinct ships from fighters to dreadnoughts. There's a lot that you guys, I mean, there's, there's Van Dole stuff and some other stuff that's in there. You've seen some of the stuff. You haven't seen some of the other stuff. Uh, we have uh, some really beautiful handcrafted environments that are built by the environment team that we have, uh, enhanced with some of the new procedural tech. So one of the things we've been doing is some of the new developments we've been doing on the Star Citizen front, we've been bringing back into Squadron 42 to expand the gameplay. Um, you know, we're just, I'm sorry, we just want to make the best one game we can. And if we got stuff there, we're going to use it. Uh, uh, so I shouldn't really apologize for that. Just do it! Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we're really working for, uh, like, systemic uh, space and FPS gameplay. So it's, it's not... So the idea is you do not just go one play path. It's not one scripted play path. You can approach uh, different missions different ways. So do you want to you know, go the, you know, the back door, stealth it? Do you want to go kick the front door down and, and you know, guns blazing? Uh, so we're building that, and the systems are all built systemically, and it is some of the same systems that we're going to be doing in the Star Citizen. Uh, and uh, you know, we're, gonna, you know, we, we're always going to have dogfighting in space, but now we're going to have dogfighting in planetary atmosphere, which is kind of a big deal. We have the new tech, which... We're going to be showing you a little later on here. Um, and we have the subsumption, uh, which is fully systemic um, AI, sort of the next generation stuff, uh, created by the genius mind of uh, Tony Zorovec, wherever he is. I don't know, he's hiding out somewhere here. Um, and uh, the big AI team behind it, led by uh, Francesco Ricucci and his guys that are implementing uh, most of it and the designers that are doing it. But it's going to allow for, um, you know, being, say, on a whatever ship you're serving on, say the Idris or a Bengal, and the crew's going about their day, having schedules, doing lots of different things, fixing things. It's uh, going to be very cool. Um, all right. I will demonstrate clicking. There you go. See. They, I'm just pretending to click, and they, they actually do it back there. Um, so as an, as an update, most of our technology is now done. We have some key things still left. So subsumption um, is still the, the major one that we're doing just because it's this whole new thing that we're doing, and we need to 
continuing to work on the pathfinding, because it's not just pathfinding like you would in a traditional game. We have these different moving ships. So like, for instance, the Idris is moving around in space while people are moving around inside it, uh, which is a challenge that you don't normally get in most games. Uh, and that has to work. Animation integration. So we've done all, we spent all this time capturing these actors at a huge amount of fidelity, and we want to make sure that the, the fluidity of the animation going between actions and everything doesn't feel sort of like the typical AI, which is like this, and then it then does that, right? Uh, so that definitely takes uh, time. Improved uh, combat logic in terms of the AI sort of working together and stuff. Uh, integrating sort of, we have the, we had sort of an older mission system, which was more traditional, the old CryEngine crisis way. But since we've gone more systemic and we've got Subsumption, we're building another layer on top of Subsumption to be able to do a, an extra level of systemic sort of missions, uh, which you'll see in Squadron 42. But then the, that's actually the engine that powers what we're doing in Star Citizen that's even more flexible. Uh, and enhanced flight AI to sort of make them fly. Uh, together as wingman better, which is kind of sort of a bit about the improved combat logic. So those are all sort of things we're working on. So AI is a big thing that we really want to push uh, to make the experience good. Object container streaming. I talked about object containers back in GamersCon. It's sort of how we, we can travel around these big star systems and bring in like really dense areas of information, objects, and then get them out. Because we can't, even if you've got a machine with a lot of memory, you can't keep it all in. You can't keep the video memory all in, so you've got to stream it in and out. And so that's the sort of technical challenge. And then we want to do some CPU and GPU optimizations. Um, click forward, please. There you go. Um, so right now, where we're at in Squadron 42 is all the chapters and gameplay features are at gray, gray box or better. So gray box is when we've had everything blocked out, all the actions done. Uh, we've sort of balanced it for what we think will be fun or not. Uh, but it doesn't have sort of the final assets, the final polish, um, and you know, things like the AI that I was talking about. Um, we are currently taking one of the chapters of the story all the way to what we would consider final shipping quality. Um, the idea would be to flush out all the technical integration and polish issues you would get with that. And that was actually, I gave an interview, I don't know, three weeks ago, probably spoke too soon. And it's saying, we're hoping to show you a Squadron 42 mission. Uh, and uh, we're not quite there yet. So we got very close. Uh, the, the team worked really hard, but we don't want to show it until we say, this is what it's going to be like in the final game with all the polish. And you know, for our standpoint, we don't want to show something too early on Squadron 42. We want to show the final stuff. So I, I know that's a bit of a bummer. But um, it's important because I think Squadron 42 itself is going to be in a fantastic experience. But uh, there is you know, work in progress, Star Citizen, yes. I think work in progress on Squadron 42 I don't really want to do because I am accused of being a bit of a perfectionist. But it does need to be a great experience. Um, and <laughs> well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm hopefully going to show you something that will make you forget what I just said. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe not, but you know, uh, then you can just buy me lots. You can buy me lots of drinks afterwards, or I'll drink lots of alcohol or do something. Uh, but, uh, but, but one of the keys is that we, and I think you know, Aaron said it in the video, and I feel that way is, um, you know, we want to do it right. It's really important to do it right. What we're enabled to do by you guys is to do it right. Because if we were in a typical situation with a publisher, they would say, well, no, you've got to make the Christmas window, get it out, and da-da-da, and then you can patch it with some, you can do some patches, and then the DLC, and don't worry about the people won't, you know, won't think it's quite as polished or whatever, and it's got a bunch of bugs. And no, that's, that's I don't think anyone, because everybody's, you know, this is what you guys, it's what I want. I spent all this time, you guys have obviously spent a vast amount of time supporting and being there and, and you know, let's make it right. Like why 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 spend Yeah. Cause because you remember, I mean look, I gotta tell you, I was you know, there's quite a lot of things that like, you know, I was kind of I was like looking forward to Uncharted Four and they're like, oh no, it's gonna be February and I was like, ah oh, damn it. And then I played it and I didn't give a shit that it was I was playing in like, whatever it was, March, instead of back in November, because it was a fucking great game. And so, sorry, <laughs> pardon, pardon my French. Uh, so, that's, so that's really important for us. So that's, that's my long-winded way of saying that as much as we wanted to have Squadron 42 for this year, it's not going to be this year, because from the polish we need to do, it, it still needs a bit more time. Um, but we will be showing you this 
final uh, this mission polish level in the near future. So, and I'm hoping that will be the, before the end of this year. But I'm not going to promise that because I get shot by people when I say that. Uh, okay, so uh, that's Squadron 42. Let me move on. Bam! Here we go. So 2.6 is the next thing we're doing, which is has uh, Star Marine, which is obviously a big thing, and Arena Commander updating. Uh, there's some of these things that we'll be talking about in the future size. Uh, we have new features for Star Marine. We're doing stuff for Arena Commander. We're adding more stuff for the Crusader map. Um, we're refactoring the lobby, lobby and the leaderboards, which we talked about on a recent ATV episode. And also we've talked about the f and we also talked about the flight model, which we're also doing. And right now, the Avocati, Avocati, I know we say it bad. Or wrong. Avocado. What do we say? Avocados? Should I just say avocados? All right. There you go. Avocados uh, uh, are, uh, you know, they have a version of it built on the 2.5 release, uh, giving some feedback, and, uh, you know, we're listening to that. And, and that's kind of what the power and the beauty of uh, this community is to do. So uh, it's going to have the new music logic system in, um, which is actually pretty cool because it's a dynamic music system that's, uh, you know, I, back in the old days of Wing Commander, we had a very more rudimentary version of that. And I think you know, music creates a fair amount of emotion and gets you into the immersion and the mode and the, 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 the action that you're doing. And uh, so I think that's actually going to be a very subtle thing that will make things better. Um, we have a sort of new uh, camera. We've been working on the camera system for 2.6. I think that's important. I mean, I keep watching all the videos you guys do. And I'm like, OK, let's give them better tools. and. Makes, because you guys make awesome videos. I mean, a lot of times we're looking at videos where we're developing going, wow, that looks awesome. Did you see this? Did you see what they did? That's great. Um, so we're going to have that in there. And uh, one big thing that we're, we're working on is to stop um, the chain loading of screens. So like you play a Arena Commander or a Star Marine game, you go back to a loading screen, do the lobby, and load again. So the idea is we won't do that. We're just going to go in there and then... There's no loading back and forth levels or anything. It's all just going to stay. You're going to go in once and there. So hopefully you'll be able to have more frequent games. So the, the, the focus for 2.6 for Arena Commander and Star Marine is to make it a really kind of fun, uh, easy way to get in and just you know fly around in space and dogfight or run around on the ground and get into sort of FPS combat uh, and, and, and make that sort of as polished as possible. Um, so here we go. Let's boom. So Arena Commander. Um, did I miss Star Marine? Hang on a sec. Let's see. Nope. There we go. Uh, is uh, so we're going to have this new virtual ship. We showed it on the ATV. So instead of like having to go to the hangar to set your ship up in the lobby screen, you can click on your ship and you can do your loadout and equip your rec items, which will make things much better and faster. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a new pirate swarm mode in addition to the vandal swarm. Uh, missiles will be persistent, so you, know, you can't just like, oh, I fire all my missiles and I crash into an asteroid to respawn with more missiles, uh, which you know, I think, I'm not saying everyone does it, but there's a few people that do that. Uh, you know, we'll have sort of reloads and stuff that will, will help in the kind of gameplay, just to sort of make it a fun, uh, fine uh, combat experience. Uh, we'll have a scoring rebalance. And uh, we'll, um, you know, I think uh, pretty much most of the ships you can fly normally in Crusader, you'll be able to fly in private match matches. All right, here we go. On to the next. There we go. <laughs> I swear. It's like. There we go. Um, all right, Star Marine, uh, there's going to be two, play two maps you'll fight on. There'll be Station Damien, which is a smaller space station, it'll be a 4x4 four four, uh, map. And then there's going to be sort of a bigger sort of asteroid base, which is a 12v12, which we call Echo 11. Uh, there'll be two game modes. There'll be deathmatch and control, so control of areas. So you fight for control as teams. Uh, we have new armor, weapons, grenades, tactical visor, friendly player ID, which helps sometimes you want to shoot your, you want to shoot your friends instead of your eyes. Uh, you'll be able to loot. So like you shoot someone, you can take weapons from them or ammunition from them. Um, and uh, we'll have achievements and ribbons. So it'll be... Both Arena Commander and Star Marine are having a lot of focus to sort of make the experience of just straight up sort of arena shooting, whether it's in space or on foot, uh, sort of fun, quick, easy to get into, much better than what we've had uh, to date. Uh, and I think that's kind of important so people can sort of have fun and play while we're working on this bigger epic. Um, there we go. Uh, and so I'm just going to walk you through before we get to the fun stuff. 
uh, kind of our roadmap. Obviously, we talked about 3.0 back in GamesCon, uh, which is sort of the first uh, kind of you would consider. Yeah, that's you know I wouldn't say it's what Star Citizen the final game is going to be, but a lot of games, if they had those features, they would be very happy. Uh, which is you know, going to have trading, cargo, piracy, smuggling, mercenary, bounty hunter, which we talked about. We're going to try to you know, get the Stanton system in there fleshed out. It's going to be using the Planet V2 technology, which I am going to show you very shortly after I've gone through these slides, uh, which I think you guys are going to like. Um, and you know, in 3.0, we'll, you know, we'll have things like the Rover and the Dragonfly, who you saw a little bit of a Gamescon, Caterpillar, the Aquila, um, which you may or may not see here in a bit. Um, OK, so and I want to give you a bit of roadmap after 3.0, so you know what we're doing. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of miners here, or refiners. Um, so 3.1, and just, and just also, by the way, in case you haven't noticed it, I know last year we said, well, we're going to do a release, we're going to try to do a release every month. Um, after going through this year, we've sort of realized that that's a very hard cadence to do because by the time you get new content in and you start testing and get feedback, it, it's almost impossible to get a, a significant amount of content to test and do the feedback. So I would say that our cadence on releases, which is what you've seen in the last few releases, is probably going to be something like two to three months between releases. Um, so just to give expectations, because I don't want to go through 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4, and everyone goes, okay, we're going to get that in four months. Because, um, again, we'll get shot by everyone on the development side. Uh, uh, but anyway, so 3.1 is going to have mining. We're going to have refining and processing. We're going to have quantum interdiction, which means you'll be able to uh, wait and you know, pull people out of uh, uh, quantum travel, uh, whether it's AI or, or you're doing it yourself, refueling, uh, escort. Uh, we're going to add additional locations to Stanton. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to have the new Drake ships. Well, we're basically, we already have the red and blue, but in the new way we do ships. Uh, the Miss Cull C for trading, the Prospector for mining, and the Origin 85X, which was uh, this kind of cool cruiser that was with the 890 jump. And if you already have an 890 jump, of course, you will get that already. Uh, the next one up would be 3.2 with repair and salvage. So we'll be able to salvage and repair. Um, so dive a bit deeper in mercenary, because we have some mercenary stuff that will be in 3.0. And we'll be sort of fleshing all these out. Again, uh, you know, adding uh, more locations uh, in, in, in Stanton and fleshing it out further. Uh, finishing out the RSI ships in the new way, the Terrapin. Uh, and then the uh, variants of the heart, the Vanguard and the Reclaimer, which is a beautiful ship. And uh, I know it's one of Nate's favorite ships. So if you know Nathan Disley likes the ship, it's going to be awesome. 3.3. Um, Here's the one. Who knew farming was so popular? So... So what we're going to aim for 3.3 is farming, uh, sort of the rescue side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then you can hit Tony up about all this here, because um, uh, uh, the uh, yet more fleshing out what we're doing with Stanton. And uh, you know the Anvil Carrick, which I think everyone's that's is. The 890, the 890 jump, right? And the Merchantman. So there you go. And by the way, so once the Squadron 42, uh, the Foundry 42 team working on the Squadron 42 ships, they're going up. They're actually all rolling. So the way we're going to do it is that we, our biggest uh, vehicle team is in Foundry 42. And right now, most of them are working on the Squadron 42 ships because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of Vandal ships, a lot of UEE big ships like the Bengal, I mean, the Idris, the Javelin. Um, so they're all going to roll off onto sort of the big new ships, which are, you know, Carrick, Jump, Merchant Man, the whole sea we had before. Uh, and the U.S. vehicle teams are going to be focusing on sort of the more, uh, you know, the more contain, like, you know, something like a Buccaneer or um, the F-8 or something like that. So um, anyway, and so that's what we're going to have with 3.3. Here we go. Uh, and then finally, 4.0. So this is our, so, um, which will be, that'll be the first time we'll go beyond, this, go beyond uh, Stanton to other star systems. I'm not going to say how many star, system, star systems yet. Depends on how much we'll be able to build with our content pipeline, which 
We'll show you a little bit uh, up and coming here, which, um, but we're very focused on, if you've seen some of the ATV, how to author um, star systems at the quality level that we like uh, with a sense of uh, lore and art and character and history, uh, but you know, be able to do planets, because you know, I mean, sometimes in FPS games, people spend forever years just making a small two by two kilometer level, and obviously, for us to build the stars, the system, the universe that we need, we, we need to be a, we need to be a bit faster than that. Um, so, but you, we we will have 4.0 is when you will be able to jump to other star systems. Uh, exploration and discovery will be sort of highlight there for for obvious reasons. Um, science and research. Um, and, uh, you know, the RSI Orion and the Crucible will be two of the big ships that we will be doing there. And so that's the roadmap for Star Citizen. So, and our goal is this is the roadmap going forward in, you know, over next year. Um, again, please don't hold me to dates because everyone goes, why did you say that, Chris? I'm like, oh. Anyway, uh, it's always best play, laid plans of mice and men. Um, okay, so well now we're going to get on to uh, what we what we talked.